Teenager Jacob Graham was born with a heart defect. It was a condition that resulted in him needing various surgeries throughout his young life. However, his situation didn't improve. Then when he developed lung disease too, there was only one solution, but that solution would blaze a trail for those who followed. When Debbie Graham was shown her son's x-rays, doctors had very few doubts. Looking at a heart that was too big for Jacob's chest and an accompanying snapshot of cloudy lungs, the news wasn't good. Indeed, doctors didn't believe there was any more they could do for the 15-year-old. Jacob was born with a congenital heart defect. By its very definition, a congenital heart defect is one that develops in utero. In Jacob's case, it resulted in seven operations throughout his young life. They were operations that gained him some extra time but didn't offer a cure. But then Jacob's lungs began to fail too. As his lung disease took hold, he had more and more difficulty breathing. Eventually, the teenager came to rely on the use of oxygen tanks to keep him alive. The situation then didn't appear to be very promising. With his condition by this point being inoperable, there was seemingly only one option left for young Jacob. He needed a heart and lung transplant, and he needed one fast. But there was a problem. And this time it didn't lie in young Jacob's rapidly declining health issues. Most hospitals had told Debbie that her son's condition was too severe and that a transplant wasn't an option. But then one hospital stepped up to the plate. The doctors and surgeons at Cincinnati Children's Hospital were at least willing to give the operation a shot. And so Debbie gave it a shot too. She had no idea how much time her son had left or if a match could be found in time. Nevertheless, she registered Jacob on the transplant list. They crossed their fingers and hoped that a suitable donor could be tracked down before it was too late. Indeed, due to the nature of heart-lung transplants, such procedures are rare. Both organs must be replaced during a single operation. And with a lack of suitable donors, it means that it's a procedure that's only carried out around a hundred times a year in the United States. The majority of patients in need of a heart and lung transplant have life-threatening impairments to those organs. In fact, such people are given only a year or two to live. And according to the United Network for Organ Sharing, around 40 of the 250 patients awaiting a donor won't find a match in time. Despite the slim odds, however, Debbie received a surprising message shortly after her son's registration. As she recalled to WCPO in April 2018, it was about 2.45 mm. The pager went off and I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting it because he'd only been on the list for 21 days. Against the odds, and in an incredibly short space of time, a suitable donor had been found. The operation, however, was still a huge risk and doctors warned the Grams they would be taking a big chance by proceeding with the transplant but it was a chance both parties had to take. No one knew what the outcome would be. Jacob, whose health had deteriorated his whole life, and his mom, who knew the potential risks of such an operation, didn't know what to expect. Likewise, doctors at the hospital didn't know what would happen, but why? As it happened, it was the first time the Cincinnati Children's Hospital had ever performed a heart and lung transplant. Nevertheless, despite the uncertainty, doctors and surgeons trusted themselves enough to try it. And so too, the Grams put their faith in the doctors. As one doctor confirmed to WECPO, it's the first one that's ever been done here. Transplant is a rare occurrence. His colleague affirmed, you can think about telling someone that, the patient then being brave enough to say, okay, you know what, I'm gonna take that chance. I'm gonna trust you. A rare occurrence indeed. Although there were around 3,000 operations to transplant either a heart or a lung in 2004, in the same year, there were only 75 heart-lung transplants, with around half of them performed in the United States. But doctors had reason to be optimistic. The outcomes of heart-lung transplants have been ever improving over the years. In fact, it's estimated by the British National Health Service 
that survival rates are around 85% around a year after the operation. And Jacob himself had nothing but trust in his doctors. As Jacob told WCP though, they've been there all the time when I needed them. They're my team. Indeed, Jacob had never known a life without regular visits to the hospital or a team of doctors around him. It's what he had grown up with, so he had no hesitation putting his life in their hands. As it turns out, Jacob needn't have worried. As it happened, the operation was a complete success. And although in April 2018, three months after the transplant, he was still recovering in hospital and prone to infection, the 15-year-old spirits were high with a new lease of life. I have a life now, Jacob described to WCPO. I'm able to do things that I wasn't able to do before. It's a situation his mom couldn't be more grateful for. As she said, I'm so thankful. I couldn't thank the donor and the donor's family enough. So what will Jacob do next? Well, maybe for the first time in his young life, Jacob is in the position where he can make plans. And with a life so far that's been at the mercy of his illness, he perhaps has a better appreciation of the things most people take for granted. His dreams, then are starting small, firstly with learning to drive, and then to take a trip to the beach. We wish him all the best with his new life. This story was really incredible, but you will like the next one more. This boy's mom didn't understand why he had been sick, but then she learned the teacher's secret. One day Kalisha Johnson Cheney found out that her son Kilon had been unwell and needed to go home from school, but she wasn't sure quite what was wrong with him. Then the little boy started to explain what was going on in the classroom, and the mom was horrified. Johnson Cheney resided in Houston, Texas. When her son Kilon was just four years old, he was a younger than kindergarten age pupil who went to the Varnett Public School. But one day Kilon apparently fell sick. He needed to be sent home because he had been vomiting. However, his mother was puzzled. She wasn't certain exactly what was the matter with him. No mother wants to see their child fall ill in any way and it's even more frustrating when it happens outside of a parent's care. It's not always easy to get to the bottom of the situation, and Johnson Cheney struggled to figure out what had taken place with her son. As it turned out, although he had thrown up, he wasn't unwell. In fact, the little boy was seriously upset and had been physically sick because he'd been crying so much. After he was taken home, the youngster confided in his mom and told her just what had happened. It made her furious. Kilon had been singled out for giggling during class. The Varnett Public School's policy for discipline is to give children of that age a timeout when needed. But the boy's teacher had taken things into her own hands, with traumatizing consequences. At school, the kids had been reading a book called After School Monster. The story is about a little girl who goes home and discovers a monster who wants to eat her. In the end, she is able to face the creature down. But it's clear that the tale still made the children nervous that monsters might be real after all. And Killan's teacher and their assistant used this to their advantage. They decided to reprimand the kids by shutting them in a dark storeroom if they misbehaved. One boy was forced to stand in the janitor's cupboard for five minutes for acting naughty as the other children put their feet against the door to keep it closed. Kilon laughed and was ordered to go in there himself as a result. And other children had to do the same too. The four-year-old was evidently terrified that he'd had to spend time in what his teacher called the monster closet. He told TV network KHOU, there was a monster and the monster was going to eat me. Kilon became so upset that it made him physically sick and he was sent home. I don't like going in the closet, the boy explained to TV news station KENS5, It is scary. When Kimlin told his mother exactly what had happened at school, she was aghast at what the teacher had done. You are taking a four-year-old and putting them in a dark closet. Johnson Cheney said to KHOU, That's like torture. That's a torture even to an adult that is afraid of the dark. Who locks anybody in a closet? Johnson Cheney complained to the school about the methods of Kilan's teacher, and the Varnett Public School's founder and superintendent Annette Clough was shocked by the claims. 
They are very serious allegations, and they are certainly a violation of our policy, she told KHOU at the time. I was appalled, and because I was not here to immediately investigate that made me more infuriated to know that this had happened. Clough told TV news station Fox 26. She added, They use the monster in a closet as means of discipline and trying to correct behavior. That is just unacceptable. The school decided to take action right away. Clough promptly suspended the teacher and their aide without pay. She explained to KENS5, I'm a grandma, I'm a mother, and I wouldn't allow that kind of behavior with my own child. The school and child services then began an investigation. The children involved in the incident were questioned to assess exactly what had occurred. At the time, the school also stated that it would be looking at footage from cameras that were placed in the classroom. Once the probe was concluded, the teacher and teacher's aide were sacked. After a video about the incident was shared online, commenters weighed in, and many of them felt the decision was the right one. These teachers are taking their evil politics to a new level. They all should be fired, Mary and Dooley shared on YouTube. Another user called the teacher's actions disgusting, and one person used that Kalan must have been so scared. However, others weren't surprised. Considering what grade school teachers get paid you all are lucky this doesn't happen more often, Melo Palo wrote. Johnson Cheney pulled Kalan out of the school back in 2012 because she didn't want him to have to see the monster closet again. And the Varnett Public School has had more drama since then. In June 2018, newspaper The Houston Chronicle reported Clough and her husband had been sentenced to 10 and 3 years in prison, respectively for embezzlement and tax fraud that saw them pocket millions. However, Kalam was doing well following the incident and told Fox 26 soon after that he had learned there was no monster in that closet. He suggested that a better punishment for his teacher would have been to give her a taste of her own medicine. Since I got in the monster closet, she should have got in the monster closet, he said.